Hello, friends. My name is Eric Cloward, and welcome to the Stoic Coffee Break. The Stoic Coffee Break is a weekly podcast where I take an aspect of Stoicism and do my best to break it down into its most important points, discuss those points with you, and figure out ways that we can apply those in our daily lives. I share my successes and my failures, and hope that you can learn something from them, all within the space of a coffee break. Today's episode is called The Stories We Tell Ourselves. Marcus Aurelius said, It is not events that disturb people, it is their judgments concerning them. How often do you find yourself upset over something that someone said? Maybe you're stressed out over something that's happening in your life. Maybe it's just the opposite, and you're extremely excited about some event that's going on. Whatever it is, every event that causes some kind of emotion for you is driven by the story that you tell yourself. Now, one of the most important aspects of applying Stoicism in our lives is understanding our perspective on the events that occur in our lives. We know that our perspective is what influences the thoughts that we have, and those thoughts lead to the emotions that we feel. And sometimes it's not easy for us to notice the perspective that we actually have on things. We have all kinds of unconscious thoughts, and we have emotional triggers from our memories of the past. There are also biological stressors that we may not even be aware of. There are a lot of things that can influence our thinking, and the more we can be aware of them, the easier it is for us to manage how much we let them have control over our lives. Now, one of the most effective ways that we can understand our perspective on events is to pay attention to the stories that we tell ourselves. Now, what do I mean by that? When an event happens, we experience some kind of external stimulus through our senses. Our brain takes in all of this data and tries to make sense of what's happening. It does this because it's trying to help us figure out what is going on and to make a prediction of what's going to happen next. Like most people, I love a good story. It's what we're drawn to as humans. And in every culture, the stories and ideas contained in those stories are the ways that we share common ideas and beliefs. It's why religions are centered around powerful stories. It's the reason why movies, gaming, music, and books are billion-dollar industries. It's why when we get together with friends, we share stories about what is happening in our lives. When our partners and our kids come home, they tell us about their day and the events that took place. It's why we're drawn to certain people. Everything in our lives is a story. Now, with every story, there's also a backstory. There's a history which sets the stage. And all of us have a history full of events and memories and emotions that influence how we interpret things. Our brains are pattern recognition machines trying to understand things by pulling from the past to see if anything matches what we are currently experiencing. Stories tie the past to the present and the present to the future. And the more familiar And the more familiar we are with the situation, the easier it is to identify what is happening, and the more confident we are about predicting what is most likely going to happen. We use stories to try and make sense of the world around us. Now, unearthing these stories is not an easy process. And when we first start listening to our self-stories, they are often a bit unclear. There are often strong emotions involved. And we may find it difficult to be honest with ourselves about how we really think or feel about something, because it can often mean admitting some aspects of ourselves that we may not like to see. I think we all have a lot of shame around the darker parts of ourselves. It's tricky business really unearthing these stories. So why do we want to understand the stories that we tell ourselves? Well, because this is the narrative of your life. This is the lens through which your mind's eye interprets everything that you experience. And if you're not aware of the stories you're creating, you're just running on autopilot. Bill Madden said, The most common act of violence is the relentless mental violence we perpetrate upon ourselves with nothing other than our thoughts. Understanding the stories that we tell ourselves is often a much easier way to understand why we do the things we do. If we just focus on the circumstances and the outcome of a situation, we can often find it perplexing to figure out how we got here. If instead we take the time to walk ourselves through our story, we can find the plot holes and the misinterpreted situations and the motivations behind our own behavior. Say, for example, that you apply for a job, and after several steps in the interview process, they let you know that you did not get the position. You're devastated because you were really excited about the opportunity. You start 
to think about what went wrong and start to analyze every interaction that you had. What's the story that you're telling yourself that's getting you so upset? Well, here are some possible ideas, and these are ones that I've had in past jobs that I didn't get. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to do the job. If only I had a degree from a better college. If only I didn't talk so much during the interview. And the list goes on and on and on. Now, unless this company told you explicitly why they didn't hire you, these are all just thoughts that your mind is making up. And sometimes your mind is not very nice to you. So understanding what you're thinking is very important because those thoughts create the emotions that you feel. When you're digging into your story, you need to think like a film critic. And by doing your best to lay out the storyline, you can figure out, how did I get here? Now, some of the questions you can ask yourselves are are pretty rudimentary, but I think they're very important. What are the facts and the circumstances and the events? What thoughts did I have in response to those events? What feelings were created by those thoughts? What actions did I take in response to those feelings? But probably the most important question of all, what is true in this situation? And by asking yourself this question and working hard to be honest with yourself, you can uncover a lot of your own thinking errors. And this type of work takes a lot of mindfulness. It's not easy to be aware of your own thinking. And I find that either writing it down or saying it out loud is a very helpful way in following the chain of events. Now let's apply this process to a scenario that happens fairly often in real life. Now let's say that I'm working on a project around the house. My partner comes up and asks me what I'm working on. I tell her and explain how I plan to accomplish my task. She scrunches up her nose and says something like, I don't understand how that can work. And in my mind, I feel like she's criticizing my idea and we end up in an argument. So let's put this situation through the through these different questions that we have. So what are the facts, circumstances, and events? Well, I was working on a project and my partner criticized my idea. What thoughts did I have in response to those events? She thinks it's a stupid idea. She thinks I'm stupid. And what feelings did I have that were created by those thoughts? Well, I felt hurt. And what action did I take in response to those feelings? Well, unfortunately, I lashed out at my partner. Now let's walk through this just a little bit further by asking the question, what is true? Did my partner actually say that she thinks it's a stupid idea and that I'm stupid? No. What my partner actually said was, I don't understand how that works. And that's something that could be interpreted in so many different ways. But more to the point, I acted as if my thoughts, my impressions of the situation were what really happened. And by asking myself what is true, then I can take a step back and go, okay, my partner really didn't say those things, and so I got upset over something that didn't really happen. And this is something that I see happen with people all the time. They take their opinion that they have about a situation, and they treat it as if it's a fact. So much of what disturbs us is not what the person said, but what we make those words mean. And stopping and asking what is true and what other information we added is a great way to help kind of parse it out and get to the root of the real issue. We'll often just take what they said and just morph it into something else because of our own history. If we're used to being heavily criticized, then we hear things through that kind of filter. We immediately assume that anything that is not explicitly positive is a criticism. Now, what we're trying to do here is diffuse the strong emotions that can come up, not by suppressing those feelings, but by intercepting the thoughts that create those feelings. If we can change our thinking, we can change our feelings. And the thing is, is we're not lying to ourselves or making something up so that we feel better. And in fact, what we're trying to do is kind of the opposite. We're trying to see things for what they really are so that our thinking is clear, which helps us regulate our emotions better because our responses are much more appropriate and in proportion to what is actually going on. Now, understanding this process is not going to magically fix our problems for us. Even when we understand what is going through our minds, changing the deeper patterns that we have and the behaviors is not a trivial task. But more than anything, it takes awareness. Awareness of what is really happening and an awareness of what you are really thinking. Because it takes consistent work to do this, 
it's really easy to let it slide. Consistently being aware of your thinking is something you have to work on every single day. And at first, this kind of awareness will only happen after a situation has happened. But as you work on this kind of awareness, you will be better able to move it closer to real time. You'll notice the thoughts as they occur, and you'll be able to give yourself some space to think about what is really happening, and you'll be able to choose how you want to respond and make better choices. And that's the end of this week's Stoic Coffee Break. As always, be good to yourself, be good to others, and thanks for listening.